Okay, thank you very much for your introduction. So, to really answer to this question, uh, I would like to start uh, with three other questions. So, first of all, how the wearable can be social? So, the concept and the types of possible relationship we can create. Why we should be uh, social? So, the possible advantages for uh, a social network of wearable devices. And what could they offer to the Internet of Things? And in the end, in the end some conclusion and further challenges. So, to start with the first question, how can uh, the wearable can be social? So, we have seen in the past a rapid growth in the number of devices belonging to the Internet of Things. In 2007, uh, uh, Steve, Job, uh, Steve Jobs presented the first uh, iPhone, and uh, after just one year, the number of things uh, connected to the internet were greater than the number of people on Earth. And this growth continues rapidly, so that uh, in 2010, uh, things were not only smartphones and tablets, but also smart cars, uh, smart TVs, uh, uh, gaming console, uh, sensor, actuator, etc. And uh, uh, Cisco believes that uh, by 2020 we will reach uh, 50 billion of objects connected to the, to the internet. But uh, others believe that uh, this number is just uh, uh, going to be more than 50 billion, like Ericsson. Uh, Morgan Stanley believes that it will be 75 billion of devices, and uh, if we look to the uh, in, to Intel, we believe that uh, we will reach 200 billion devices. So that's a lot of uh, devices. What about uh, wearable? So till now, wearable are just uh, peripheral devices uh, for the smartphone, because smartphone is uh, what is going to enable the connectivity of wearable to the internet. But from uh, a, a recent uh, survey from the Ericsson Consumer Lab, this from March uh, 2016, uh, they conducted an online survey of 5,000 uh, people, uh, both iPhone and Android users, uh, from an age of 15 to 70, uh, 75 years old. And uh, okay, so wearable, wearable, will substitute uh, watches and clock, so this is expected. But 43% uh, also believe we are going to uh, replace uh, also smartphone. So we are going to have uh, an internet of wearable things, where wearable will become an active part in the IoT world. So we have to solve problems related to this number of devices, because all these devices have to cooperate in some ways to offer uh, services to the user. So, if the total number of people in the world is around 7 billion, we've seen that we will reach uh, uh, hundreds of billions of devices. So, how can a device find the right object that can provide the right information whenever it needs? So, among humans, this problem is solved using a social network. According to a recent Facebook survey, uh, the average degree of separation among its 1.75 billion active users is only 3.57 up. It means that uh, each Facebook user is separated among each other by only three other users and half. That's a pretty low number, so we can expect that we will have similar number of also for a social network or object. So we can, we can think to use the same approach also to enable objects in the IoT to cooperate. And that, this concept led us to the social, uh, social Internet of Things paradigm. It means a social network of intelligent ob objects that uh, can create uh, their own relationship. So they mimic the behavior of the owner and follow the rules set by them. So 
this kind of paradigm can lead us to several advantages because such a network can be more navigable, can be more scalable because every object can uh, uh, look for the uh, information it needs uh, in an autonomous way and then it can provide a level of trustworthiness among nodes that could not be uh, achieved in any other way. The reason that led the object to participate in such a network are similar to reason that uh, uh, push humans to participate. So to become more visible, to find and discover new resources, and, uh, obtain, and to obtain context information. So we uh, envision a set of types of relationships starting from uh, the human model. So the first type of relationship we usually have is with our family. So also for the object, we can create a parental object relationship among objects that belong to the same company, producted in the same period. We also create a relationship with our housemate or with our colleagues. So in the same way, objects can create co-location object relationship. So for example, all the objects I own that are in my house and the co-worker object relationship. So for example, my smartphone with uh, uh, the printer we have at work. Then we have a social object relationship that follow the relationship based on the owners. So if I hang out with a friend a lot of times, our smartphone can create a social object relationship. And in the end, uh, the ownership object relationship that is really for thinking for wearable devices because all the wearable I can have will create an object, uh, a ownership object relationship because they belong to me and uh, will provide uh, the user with services. <clears throat> so why should the wearable be social? <coughs> okay, let's take uh, a step back to understand the reference scenario. We will have, as I said, a lot of objects interconnected among them. And all these objects will belong to the real world. But the real world objects have a lot of constraints. Battery, uh, for the wearable, maybe battery, it will be the first problem, but uh, communication capability, etc. So every object will have a, a virtual counterpart in the, in the virtual world maybe in the cloud, and uh, using the visu the vi these virtual counterparts, we can build up uh, several uh, applications. So objects can use the social network to navigate this network and look for the services they need. But uh, we don't want uh, a global solution to navigate the network. Because uh, to have a global view of such a network or such a big network in the IoT would be almost impossible. So we have to find uh, a distributed solution. <laughs> Kleinberg said in 2001 that a network is navigable if uh, there is a short path among almost all pairs of nodes in the network. So formally, this means that uh, there exists a giant component. It means a component with uh, almost all the nodes. And uh, the diameter of the network is low. Usually, should be bounded by logarithm of n, where n is the number of nodes. So <laughs> we are looking for a distributed solution. And we know that uh, this solution is possible because Milgram demonstrated that uh, with an experiment where he asked two people in Nebraska and Kansas to deliver a letter to a guy in Boston. So these people only uh, knew about the first name of these, uh, of these people, and they were asked to uh, send the, the letter to someone they knew uh, if it was possibly connected to the destination. So what happened, it was that uh, people with only no local, knowledge, uh, local knowledge 
were able to send this letter to friend, then to another friend, etc. And uh, almost all the letter arrived at the destination. So we studied some properties that can help uh, local navigability. And uh, we find that uh, the first property is the node degree. It means uh, the neighborhood average degree. In the Milgram experiment, uh, the last person before, before the destination was most of the time uh, Mr. Jacob, a cloth mer merchant where all the people rely on to send a letter to the destination. And uh, the other parameter is the local clustering. Uh, that is a measure of the degree to which nodes in a graph uh, tend to connect, to cluster together. So we have two parameters, icon n, that means uh, uh, the number of actual links among the, uh, my friends, and uh, k con n is the <coughs> actual number of friends. So if we create a social network of objects, we can guide uh, the object to select, to select the appropriate relationship for the benefit of the overall network navigability. So we run some simulation and we calculate the average path length using local rules for the nodes. So we set a maximum number of uh, uh, friends allowed for each node so that uh, uh, X percent of the nodes in the network uh, should have at least Y percent of this maximum number of friends. So we apply different uh, uh, policies and uh, compare that to a case where no limit, where, where there were no limit for the uh, number of friendship. And we can see that uh, choosing uh, these two parameter x and epsilon, uh, in a wise way, we can achieve similar performance. But what's important is that uh, if we reduce the number of connection for each friend, for each node, we can reduce the memory consumption, the use of com computational um, power and battery, and uh, we can improve the efficacy of the service search operation because every node will have a smaller database to look for when, you have, uh, when uh, it has to, uh, to, to search for other objects. But in such a network, when I ask for an information, how can I be sure that the information uh, I, I receive is reliable? This led us to the second problem, trustworthiness. <laughs> this is the quality of a person or a thing that inspires reliability. So the first property is transitivity that represents the concept of recommendation of someone that is not directly known. The second property is composability. is the ability to compose recommendation received uh, from different sources to decide whether or not to trust someone. Then we have personali personalization. Trustworthiness is based on uh, a user past experiences. So uh, it's normal that uh, two different people can have a different, op a different opinion about a third one because they have, they have had different uh, experiences. And in, same way, in the same way, uh, trustworthiness is also asymmetric uh, because uh, two persons may have a different level of trustworthiness for each other. So we analyzed the possible elements to construct a trustworthiness model in the CIOT. So the first one was obviously a feedback system, a system that helps each node to evaluate the service received. Then we have the number of transactions among different nodes so that we can uh, understand if a node is required by a lot of other uh, nodes. We have the credibility used to weight the recommendation I received from my friends and uh, the transaction factor because in the IoT world there will be a lot of different kind of application from uh, uh, sensing measures to maybe bank transaction so I don't want malicious node 
to build up the, the trustworthiness level with, uh, uh, for example, uh, sensing measure, and then became malicious when uh, we have to deal with a bank transaction. Other elements are the relationship factor, because uh, as it happens also uh, among humans, someone can act malicious only with people they actually don't know, and then be reliable with uh, its family or its friend. The centrality of a node, because a no if a node is central in the network, and a lot of people uh, rely on, the, on that node, so I can, I can think that the node is, uh, is trustworthy. And finally, uh, something that is typical of uh, IoT system is the computational capability. Because uh, <laughs> uh, there will be a lot of different kind of intelligence in the IoT, from sensor to uh, smart devices. So I can think that a smart, devices, a smart device can be uh, programmed in a malicious way and uh, this will not be possible for uh, dummy devices, for example. So also in this case, uh, we have run some simulation. So <laughs> we compared this, uh, the, red, uh, the red line, our approach, with uh, a system where no trust uh, algorithm were implemented. And uh, we have the Tidal Trust, that is a trust uh, obtained from social networks, while uh, uh, this algorithm is uh, an algorithm derived from peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks. So in this simulation, 25% of the node uh, were malicious, and uh, they were pretty smart because they acted in a different way based on the, re on the relationship they had. So it was difficult to isolate them in, at first, but uh, we can see that uh, uh, we obtain pretty good results uh, after 8,000 transactions. So, <laughs> uh, what could the social wearables offer to the IoT? As defined, the IoT is a, a worldwide network of interconnected, uniquely addressable objects where objects look for others to provide composite service for the benefit of the humans. Perfect. But there are some problems. Till now, IoT is uh, focused on the technological point of view. And uh, we are not considering people. So, ah, OK. We can see this, this slide, <laughs> but I will tell you the the blue circles. So we have uh, five problems. Heterogeneity, because every device has its own way to interact uh, with people, with the user, so that people have to uh, discern how to use each of these devices. We have isolation. In the IoT, mm, applications are usually vertical, so that uh, uh, we need some way to make uh, object interoperable among them. So we have a need for standards, as I said this morning. We have obsolescence, because uh, when we buy an uh, object uh, in different periods of time, they hardly can communicate uh, between each other. We have personalization. User will be involved in a lot of IoT application, and all these IoT application will have something in common. We all need to uh, understand the user context. And uh, <laughs> since no person is alike, uh, this is a pretty important, por uh, important point. And we should look into it because it will, be, uh, it will enable to provide a better quality of experience to the, to the user. And finally, we have security and trust because the most powerful IoT application will be the ones that uh, uh, often exchange data among them. And I want to be sure that uh, the data received are trustworthy and the data I provide are provided only to some kind of people, so not to everyone. And uh, 
Okay, so maybe social wearable will not solve every problem in IoT, but uh, obviously they will help a lot because they, they will uh, strengthen the degree of connectivity between user and things, so will have will help the heterogeneity problem, and uh, they will turn not to be only communicating object, but entities that will that will be able to take uh, autonomous decision. And for me, my personal opinion, this is the most important point because they will give an accurate view of the user context. So uh, we, will can, we will be able to understand, for example, the emotional state of the user and provide the application accordingly. So some conclusion. Social internal things is a good model, both for evaluate the object trustworthiness, but also to control the network navigability. In this context, social wearables can close the gap that there is today between user and IoT application, and could provide a mean to improve the quality of experience of IoT application, because we will know uh, the exact emotional state of each user. To go on, on this paradigm, we will need uh, uh, real data on object behavior. Uh, and uh, we also include that uh, there will be a light social object authentication and some reward mechanism to incentive the object to participate in a social network. Till now we have implemented a platform that is uh, available at this link based on uh, Google App Engine. We have also defined an uh, architecture to exploit network uh, edge resources such as mobile edge computing and uh, phone computing. And uh, we started to deploy some simple application with industrial partners uh, back, in, uh, back in Cagliari. Okay, thank you for your attention.